Hi there, in this video we are going to talk about a concept called Key Data Page Access in Pega. This video assumes that you have basic understanding about data pages, data type, sections, case type in Pega. So let's begin. I'll start with my setup. I have an application called Test Application. In this application I have a case type called Test Case. If I open this case type, we have only one step. If I run this case type, the only step that we just saw has this section wherein we have two drop downs. One is for country and one is for state. Right now, both these drop downs do not show any values because we haven't configured them yet. The purpose or the outcome at the end of this uh, video will be uh, will show a list of countries in the first drop down. And in the second drop down, we will show list of states from the selected country. Uh, I also have a data type called state. This data type has only two columns, country and state. Here I have list of all the states from India and from United States of America. So we'll use this data for our use case. So let's begin. So we need to first configure source for the first drop down called country so i'll create a data page uh, which would be used as a source of this drop down so i'll first create a report definition I'll name this report definition as list of countries. Here we are going to fetch only the country property. And I'll remove duplicate rows because otherwise it would return India and USA multiple times. So the report definition is ready. I'll now create a data page that will make use of this report definition. Again, I'll name the data page as list of countries. I'll change the structure of this data page to a list because it is going to hold list of countries. I'll change the scope from thread to node because list of countries do not change that often. Now I'll make use of the report definition that we just created as a source of this data page. Because it's a node level data page, we need to give access group. So I'll select an access group. Now I'll save this data page. So this data page is now ready to be used in our section. I'll open the section now. So here we'll change the source from as defined on property to a data page. So here uh, now the data pages uh, list of countries is being used as a source and we are using the property called country for display as well as for value. Let me save this change. If I refresh our case now, we should see list of countries in the first drop down. So we had two countries, we see those two countries, India and USA. Now we'll configure the source for the second drop down. So I'll again create another report definition at a data page that we, will, that we need for the second drop down. So I'll create a report definition first. I'll name this report definition as list of states. So here we will fetch both the columns in the data type. That is country and state. Now we'll create another 
data page that would make use of this report definition. I'll name this data page as list of states. Again, I'll change the structure from page to list, the thread, uh, the scope from thread to node. I'll change the source to a report definition, which we just created. We also need to give the access group. So now this data page is ready to be used for the second dropdown. But here, like we said, will make use of the key data page access concept in Pega. Uh, so let's enable the key data page access to this data page. Uh, as soon as we check that, we get another option allow multiple pages per key. What that means is, uh, are there going to be multiple pages per same key in this data page? So in our example, our key is going to be country. And in our data page, there will be multiple states per country. So we need to check this as well because there are going to be multiple pages per key. And then we need to define our key. Like I said, the key in our example is going to be country. We'll pass the value of country to this data page and then list of all the states would be written and that we would use in our second dropdown. Uh, every time we enable the key data page access in a data page, we need another property uh, that will refer to this data page. Then only we can make use of the key data page access. So now I'll create a property. I'll name this property as list of states. Again, the type of the property needs to, ch to be changed to page list and the page definition would be this class of the data type because that's what it's going to hold instances of this class. And then here in the data page access section, we will change uh, from manual to copy data from a data page because in this property, we are going to copy the data from the data page that we just created. That is D underscore list of states. So I'll refer the data page here so as soon as we refer the data page we see the key that we have defined in our case country is the key so to this country key we will pass the value of country and as you remember uh, for the first drop down we have a property called country and that property is going to hold the value of the uh, country so that's what i'll select here Uh, I just uh, need to save this property to the test case type class. Let me do that change. Uh, so I'll save as. Instead of work class, I need to be save it in test case class because my country property is in test case class. So now our list of states property is ready. Let me explain it one more time. Uh, the type of this property is page list and the class or the instances of state class uh, it is going to hold. That's why we have given page definition as state class. And then in the data access section, we are copying the data from a data page, which is list of states. As soon as we select the data page, we get an option to pass the value to the key field. That is the country and we are passing the value of country which we have in the first drop down. So this property is now ready. Now we need to make use of this property in our section. If I go back to our section and if I open the properties of the state drop down. So here we will change the source from as defined on property to a clipboard page. And here I am using that property called list of states. And we are using the property called states for value as well as for as well as for display purpose let me save this 
I'll refresh this case. So here India is selected by default. Here we see all the different states from India. Let's change the country to USA. I still see a list of states from India. Uh, so we need to make a small change in order to see states from USA when we change the value to USA. Let's go to our section. What I need to do is on this country drop down every time the value is changed I need to post it to clipboard. So let's add that as an action set. Here I'll select the event as change. So every time the value of the country drop down changes post the value of the property which, which means it will post the value to clipboard. Submit and on the second uh, drop down, which is inside a dynamic layout, here I need to make another small change. I need to configure a refresh condition that is, every time the value of country changes, refresh the dynamic layout. So that's what I'm doing country changes. So that's our refresh condition refresh the dynamic layout every time the country changes. So I'll save this, I'll save this section. Now, if I go back to the uh, case. Let me refresh the case one more time. Again, right now it is India. So we see all the different states from India, states and union territories. Now let's change the country to USA. If I change, I change the country to USA and we see all the different states from USA. Let's change it back to India one more time. And we see all the different states from India. So here, we have used key data page access to display list of states from the selected country. Uh, another approach to implement this same requirement would be to create a parameterized page. So every time the value of country changes, we can pass that value as a parameter to a data page and then the data page fetches all the different states for that country. But in order to do that, uh, Pega platform needs to query the database to fetch all the different states from the uh, for that particular country. But with key data page access, list of all the different states for all the different countries are loaded onto the clipboard only once. And every time the value of country changes, we just show list of all the different states from that country from clipboard. The system do not query the data database every time the value of country changes. So this is the advantage of using key data page access. Uh, it is uh, it is a best practice to use key data page access Every time we have such a requirement, it is uh, better in terms of performance because we are avoiding multiple queries to the database. Another example that I can give you to implement such a requirement is, let's say we have a car listing application uh, wherein the customer can select the brand or the company. Uh, so the moment they select a company, for example, Maruti or Tata or Hyundai, we should show all the different cars for that company uh, in, a, in an underlying section. So we can again configure the same requirement with key data page access, wherein the name of the company that is Maruti or Tata or Hyundai will be the key for the key data page access. Uh, that's it for this video. Uh, let me know in the comment section if you have any question about this topic. Also, let me know if you want me to cover any other topic in this forum. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.